J.D. and the Fiery Power Box by Glenn Mark Hibbert Late one afternoon, six-year-old J.D. is in her room playing with Haslow, her small brown teddy bear. Five minutes before, Daddy was asking Mummy what was going to be for dinner, and Mummy was asking Daddy when he was going to bring in wood for the wood burner. Now she can't hear any voices. Puzzled about this, she stands. I'd better see what's going on. In her imagination, Hazo asks to come along. JD agrees and picks him up. With Hazo in her arms, she walks into the lounge. It's empty. I wonder where Mummy and Daddy are. JD tries not to be worried, but instead stops, breathes quietly, and listens. There's a lot of talk happening outside Hazlo. JD recognises her mummy's voice. Since old Henry at number six backed his car into it, I have never trusted that power box. Carrying her small brown teddy bear, JD opens the sliding door and looks out. A small group of people are gathered around the crooked black power box in the cul-de-sac where JD's house is. JD learned once from daddy that the job of the black power box is to connect electricity to all the homes nearby. JD likes words, and she likes the word electricity. It's fun to say! More importantly though, is what electricity does. With electricity, she can play on the Xbox, PlayStation, or watch television. If she wakes up in the night, and she has to find the toilet, Light from the bathroom helps guide her way. When she's allowed to have an icy pole, the plugged-in freezer will keep it frozen. Electricity is very helpful. From the balcony, JD sees a work van on the road. She watches as an electrician removes the lid off the power box. Electrician. That's another fun word to say. And she smiles. Suddenly, gasps come from the people gathered below. JD gasps too. Oh my goodness. Watching, she sees grey black smoke bloom from the power box. She twitches her nose. That stinks. JD looks at Hazlo in her arms. What's going on? She imagines the teddy bear asking. Let's go and look, she answers. When mummy sees JD and Hazlo approach, she beckons her near. Stay by me, we mustn't get too close. JD has never seen what things look like under the black box cover. Now she does. JD sees a lot of coloured wires entwined with one another. It reminds her of the bowl of spaghetti she ate at lunchtime today. Except the noodles were white. Here, there were blue wires and yellow wires, red wires and black wires. Stay back, cried the electrician. The smoke's turned into flame. There's a fire. JD stares, eyes wide. That's not good. Does anyone have a fire extinguisher? Called the electrician. I'll go, a man responds and leaves the crowd in a hurry. That's my daddy, JD proudly tells everyone. Daddy is soon back and passes a tall red canister over to the electrician. JD thinks. She has often looked at the tall red canister attached on the wall behind the wood burner. Today, she has learned it's called a fire extinguisher, but still doesn't know what it does, or what the electrician means when he asks Daddy if there is enough pressure in it. I checked the gauge, says Daddy, and there is enough pressure. Good, replies the electrician. JD watches with interest as the workman unclips a short black hose pulls a pin and carefully goes up to the blazing wires. Like a toy gun, he squeezes a trigger. Wow, cries JD, that's cool. From the nozzle of the short black hose, a great gush of spray spews out over the flame. It reminds JD of puffy white clouds. What's all that, Daddy, she asks. Sodium bar carbonite, sweetie. Mummy frowns at Daddy. Do you really think she's going to know what that means? Daddy's words don't come out. Uh... It is true. 
JD doesn't know the words that he used, but what great sounding words they are! Yes, JD likes words, and will know what all of them mean one day. Soon the fire is out, and everyone cheers! All seems alright now, but JD soon discovers a problem. With the electricity down, she can't play on the Xbox, PlayStation, or watch television like she normally does before tea time. Worse though, at tea time, the electricity still isn't going. What do we do, laments JD. We will do what people do in places that don't have electricity, says Daddy. There are people in places that don't have electricity? JD is surprised to hear that. There are. Oh my goodness, how do they make dinner? You will soon see. But that can only happen if I get wood for the wood burner. Daddies and mummies can be silly, but they can also be real brainy. With the fire going full bore and pots and pans sitting on top of the wood burner, that is how dinner is cooked. Soon after, the food is ready. What an adventurous afternoon without electricity JD has had. Tonight, for the first time, she eats dinner by candlelight. She sits still and thinks, then smiles. Both her dinner and her heart is warm.